All right, whipping tongue graph, the first. Hopefully the only <laughs> action. So you start by cutting the top of the rootstock off uh, on an angle. The the uh, steeper the angle, the better the graft. And then you take your knife and about two thirds from the front edge, you're going to make a cut down the length of the stalk. And the cut needs to be at least one knife width uh, or deeper. It depends on the size of the bud wood that you're using or the scion wood. Next, you're going to take your scion, which is your stick of variety. And you also, just to make your life easier for yourself, cut the bottom of that at an angle. Um, it's good if you can get the angles close, but that's not mandatory. I always clean up the cut with the knife, with the grafting knife, just by slicing. This way I can uh, lengthen the, the angle, and you'll notice that I've made more than one pass with the knife. Purists say you should just do one cut, um, but the, in my opinion, the tree doesn't know any different. You'll notice that I anchored the wood and the knife so that I had complete control. I hold them against my body. Um, you need to make sure that you're staying safe while you're doing this because the knife is sharp and it can slip. So once I've done that, you'll notice that I cut a slit, a flap, um, down the length of the uh, scion wood as well. Again, it needs to be at least one knife width. I tend to go deeper so that I can have a longer stretch of contact. And then you match the two up. You put the flap of one into the space of the other and slide it down and wiggle it so that the edges are lined up. That's the best way of getting cambium to cambium contact. Um, you'll notice that my scion is too small in caliper for my rootstock. I'm still going to do the, the graft because matching calipers is time consuming and almost impossible. Um, it means that you only have half the opportunity. If the scion had been the same width as the rootstock, then there would have been an opportunity on this side for the tree to heal together and uh, an opportunity on this side for the tree to heal together. So I'm just having my options here. Um, the next thing that we do is we take a grafting tape. We use stretchy poly tape. It does help if you keep it in a pocket close to your body or under your arm. Um, that way the tape is a good temperature to work with. I lay it across the um, two pieces of wood midway and uh, anchor it with my finger while I wrap it around the first time or two. And then after that you want, whoops, it breaks sometimes. Um, so you just start again. After that I try to go down and I'm going to wrap it until I've covered all of the crack in the root stalk. And then I head up. You want to go from the bottom to the top. Um, the world won't end if you don't, but it does help to keep the rain from um, slipping in through the cracks of the tape. It's more important when you're using non-poly tape that needs to be um, stretched and tied. This stuff is pretty water resistant. You see when it breaks, I just take up where I left off and keep going. And then I do come down again. So with a uh, whip and tongue graft, it doesn't matter really how thick your tape is because there's nothing that you have to have pop out from the tape. Um, and the poly tape, the first layer is just sort of uh, lightly attaching them and the last layers you can pull tighter to keep the, the pressure on. And then I count up three or four buds and I snip just above the third or fourth bud and then I label it. And that's a whip and tongue graft. Excellent.